you need it both this morning. You need the oil and you need the wine. I tell you, we got in, Sister Janet had a Christmas service at her house Thursday night. And boy, the portal opened up in that house and the revelation of God began to flow. And I believe in 10 minutes she preached one of the best messages on the gifts of the Spirit I've ever heard preached in my lifetime. And God just opened up the heaven and the flow was there. And it did take the Lord half an hour to do what He was wanting to do. He began to heal people. He began to prophesy to people. He began to touch people all over that room. And uh, it wasn't really a thing in the world except the house opened, the gate opened, the portal opened. Jeff got to singing and he really uh, brought, of course he always does, brought us right into the throne. And I was uh, just so amazed at the revelation of the grace of God that came out in that meeting in just a few moments, just a few moments, just a few moments. See, we've been preaching on that. Grace, grace, you shall say to this mountain, grace, grace, hallelujah. And see, people have, now you watch what I'm telling you, it'll get bigger because people have had this idea of, you know, grace being just uh, some sweet little, you know, loving everything, and it is, but it's power. It's the, it's the very ability of God to flow in the supernatural. And I'll tell you what I feel that grace this morning and, and we were singing pour in the oil and the wine. We need the oil and the wine. That oil will soothe you. It'll heal you. It'll minister to you. It'll get down, flow down till it penetrates into all the dry parts of your life and make it flourish again. But you need wine to make the heart glad. Glory to God. That's what the Bible says. He gave men wine to make their heart glad. And we need that gladness in the house of God. Amen. And that's what was happening over there Thursday. Everybody just got just overwhelmed. Just got glad. Amen. And we're going to get glad here today. Get overwhelmed here today. Amen. I'm like the old songs. I don't know what you come to do. But I come to praise the Lord. I come to get in His presence. I come to hear what He has to say. I'm not going to waste my time. Get up. Get ready. Drag over here and then just have an ordinary time. I come to hear from heaven. I come to see the supernatural. Amen. And I feel that touch today. I feel it on this service. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We praise you today because of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And we loose that anointing in this place, in this house. Come on, folks, pray with me. We loose it all over this house. We loose it in the, in the worship. Let the tabernacle of David open up in our midst today. We loose it in every word that is said today. Let the utterance, a door of great utterance in the Spirit open up in this house and let the heavens open up wide. Let the gates of glory open up in our midst. Let the very vaults of the mysteries and secrets of God come open to us today. Let us see into that supernatural world. Let us speak from another dimension and from another realm. Let your people have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God would say in this house. Amen. Let there only be faith and hope and love manifest in this place today. Drive out doubt, fear, unbelief, anything uh, that would cause us to accept the ordinary. Let us rise above it today, God, and see into the deeper realms of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Let every person today have the deep touch of God upon them. Let deep call unto the deep in this house today. Hallelujah. Heal the people as they sit in your presence. Deliver your people as they sit up under the anointing. Uh, deliver all of our minds as we yield to the Holy Ghost today. Hallelujah. Let there be spontaneous
greatest eruptions. Uh, hallelujah. Glory in our midst. Uh, we take this whole day for the glory. We take this morning, this evening uh, for the glory. Hallelujah. And we thank you that somebody is going to get changed in this house today. There will be a difference, Lord. Uh, and we call it for it in the name of Jesus. Uh, amen and amen. Hallelujah. God bless you today. Praise the Lord.
to see a miracle every day. Right, right. Because we think that it's out of the ordinary. Out of the ordinary. But really, miracles should be our normal. Yeah. It shouldn't be something that we think of as out of the ordinary for the life of a believer. Now, to an unbeliever, it should be a strange thing, a sign and a wonder. But once you have been in church long enough and lived the Christ life long enough, it should be your everyday walk with God. Because Jesus lived a life where every day, anything he needed, he created. And anything that anyone else needed around him and came to him for, he created. He lived the miraculous. And he didn't just live it once a year. But in three years' time, John said that if he could write down all the things Jesus said and all the things that he did, he doesn't think that the whole world could contain the books. And we have so many miracles that not even all of them are repeated in each gospel. Right. Some are, but there are some that are in some Gospels that don't show up in others. Why? Because there were so many, you couldn't write them all down. Right. You had to keep the story shorter. You had to cut a few things out. But that was the lifestyle that he lived, and that's the lifestyle that we're supposed to be living. Yeah. Because we're not normal people. That's right. Now, if we were normal people, then we could live a normal lifestyle. But because you're not normal... Because you've been made a new creation, yeah. you've been called up hither to live a whole nother kind of life. That's and right. don't let it challenge you in the sense of making you afraid. That's right. Right. Don't be fearful to walk in the supernatural. Yeah. Don't think that's only for the preachers, or it's only for the special ones, or it's only for this and it's only for that. No, that's not what it's about. It's a lifestyle for every yeah, Christian indeed. to live. And you don't have to turn there, but I'm going to read to you from 1 John chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. It starts off by saying this, And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. Now, the truth is, if you don't believe the God love that God has towards you, if you're not convinced that He is totally in love with you, that nothing you've ever said or done can stop that love, right. that that love is not based in your performance yeah. or anyone else's performance, yeah. That, that because He made you, He loves you. Amen. And that's it. Amen. That He sees you in His image no matter what happens between now and from the time that you were created in eternity's past, from the time that you showed up and were sent to this earth until this moment, no matter what has happened between there and then, His love for you has never changed. It's never wavered. If you're not convinced of that, you can't live a lifestyle of miracles. Yeah. Because you'll be under condemnation. That's right. You'll always wonder if God. If. First of all, there's a whole group of people out there, and not I don't mean out there in the world, I mean out there right in the church. Right, right in churches. Sometimes we find right inside of ourselves right. that wonder if God will. All right. If He even really wants to. Yeah. Because sometimes when you're laying there in pain, right. you think, God, why are you letting this happen to me? Now, the truth is he isn't. We know that in our minds. We know that from the Word. But that old religion tries to keep creep up. Why don't you do something about this? Why aren't you making this happen? All of those things. And so you first have to be totally convinced of the love of God. If you're going to believe that he'll do a miracle for you every day, if you're going to believe he'll do a miracle when you lay hands on others, when you pray for them, You've got to be convinced that He loves us. Amen. Amen. And you've got to be convinced that it doesn't matter who, what, when, where, or why. Because when people came to Jesus for a miracle, He didn't ask them about their background. That's right. He didn't ask them about their past. That's right. He didn't ask them if they were sinners. That's right. He didn't ask them how much they prayed before they got there. Yes. But He said, according to thy faith, be it, be it unto be thee. <laughs> if you can believe for it, you can receive yes, it. Yes, you can. Then it says, it goes on and says that God is love. We talk about that all the time. He doesn't talk about love. He doesn't just like love. He's not out just promoting love. He That's is right. love. Yeah. And he can't be anything else. Amen. Doesn't know how to be anything else. Amen. He just is love. Glory. He's love that will love you when you're at your lowest point and when you're at your highest point. Yeah. He's love that will love you no matter what. He's love that loves you when you feel like nobody else loves you. You don't have to worry because he can't do anything else. Now, love and agreement are not the same. 
The world tries to tell you these days that if you love me, you'll agree with me. And you'll say I'm right. God loves us enough to say you're wrong. And the path you're on is going to destroy you, so get off of it. You're wrong about this, and that's why you're still rolling around that problem and that same old thing. Now, he doesn't do it for our demise. He does it for our good. He has no intention of telling you that you're wrong and then leaving you there. He has every intention of showing you the right way and asking you to get on the path. But as Dad told you last week, he's a gentleman. Right. And he doesn't want a bunch of robots that just go around doing what he says because if they don't, he's going to beat them over the head. Right. He doesn't want a bunch of people operating in fear, but he wants us to share the same love that he has. So God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Yeah. You can't dwell in God and not live a supernatural life. Right. And you can't have God dwelling in you and not live a supernatural life. Yeah. At least if you're aware of it. Yeah. Now, you can be like <laughs> Michelle O'Donnell talks about the fish that swam in the ocean that said to the other fish, How's the water today? The fish said, "What? what what's water? <laughs> You can live in total oblivion to the fact that heaven is here on earth. Right. That like Matt said, we have access to portals into heaven, but not only just in a good service, but in any moment in your life when you need it, all of heaven surrounds you. Constantly you are surrounded by angels, you are surrounded by the spirits of just men that have gone on before you. All the time the supernatural is all around you. And it's just a matter of getting out of this carnal mind and putting on the mind of Christ. Right. And then it says that herein our love is made perfect. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. That means you're not afraid for God to show up. Right. I'm not afraid for God to show up. Amen. Even if he's going to correct me and show me something that I need to get better about me, I'm not afraid for him no, to deal with me. I can be like David. David cried out, even in the Old Testament, David said, judge my heart, O Lord. Right. Judge the words of my mouth. Come in and judge it. Yeah. How could he say that? Because he loved God and he knew God loved him. Amen. He wasn't afraid to let God come in and do the work in his life. And then it says, because as he is, so are we in this world. If we're going to be as he is, then we have to live and walk a miraculous life. That is how, and, and not up in heaven. I know that when we die and we go to heaven, that in heaven there is a place of no sickness, right. no disease, no death, yeah. no sin, no lack, no any of those things. And I am very happy about that. Yes. Amen. Yeah. But the Bible promises me more than just that. Yeah. As he is, so are we yeah. in what? In this world. Yeah. Not in some world to come. Right. I don't want to get my miracle when I make it to heaven. But right here in this earth, I want to live a life that's miraculous. I want to see the Lord break in and do miraculous things in my life. When I need it, when my children need it, when those around me need it, I want to be able to tap into... Hallelujah. The miraculous around me that's constantly flowing, never goes away. I don't have to work it up. See, we Pentecostals think they have to work it up for an hour. Right. Now, it is true that you have to build up someone's faith if they're believing for their own miracle. And that there is truth in that. Because the truth is, the man of God can get under the power of the Holy Ghost, come down here, and under that power gets you healed. But if you walk out, one of two things is going to happen. A symptom shows up and you fall apart yep. instead of standing in the faith because you never had any to begin with. Or just some other disease comes upon you and you're right back in the same old place you were before. We've had that. Now, you know, I'll, I'll say it in my own life. I've had times when the Lord came in, provided me supernaturally. It was wonderful. We rejoiced in it. But when the money dried up, oh, Lord, help us again. Because we didn't have, I didn't have a true sense of there's no such thing as lack in the kingdom. Yeah. Where I could li li look lack in the face yeah. and say, no, you don't belong here. Right. That's right. And not be scared and not be moved and not be falling apart and not be worried and not let it keep me up at night. Yeah. 
right. and all those things. See, you can look it in the face and you can have perfect peace and know this too shall pass because it just can't stay here. And that I don't care if it comes into my bank account, if it comes by somebody else, if it just shows up on my doorstep, if the dog comes in carrying money in his right. mouth that I need, I don't care how it's going to happen. I just know that the Lord will never let me go hungry. He'll never let me lose anything that he's given to me. Yeah. I don't have to worry about it. I can throw all my cares on him, yeah. for he careth for me. Yeah. And in the other place it talks about this, Jesus said when the disciples asked him how to pray, he said, Thy kingdom come, yeah. thy will be done, yeah. where? In yeah. earth. How? As it is in heaven. If nobody's sick in heaven, they're not supposed to be sick in the well, earth. Oh, that's right. If there's not one saint walking around sick in heaven, Amen. then there's not supposed to be a saint walking around sick in the Praise earth. And, and, you know, that's a strong word. It's a strong word to myself. Amen. But if we don't start teaching it, and if we don't start proclaiming it, unless we decree a thing, how will it ever be established? Amen. If we don't get up our faith in it and start believing it and start decreeing it, how are people ever going to lift their faith up to that level? If nobody's broke in heaven, if not a saint goes without in heaven, a saint shouldn't go without in the earth. If babies aren't dying in heaven, babies shouldn't be dying here in the earth. It's just, it, you know, it, we have to really look at these things and stop looking at them through religious eyes that just That's think right. of it as some nice little saying that we usually say over the dead That's right. that have already passed on right. instead of looking at it as a kingdom reality Hallelujah. a law of the kingdom that should be operating in our lives yeah. every single day every single moment that we can stand to and if there is anything that we know isn't going on in heaven we can turn around and pray no thy kingdom come yeah. That's right. thy will be done That's right. right here in this earth Yes. Just like it is in heaven. And that's the earth inside yes. of you, but it's also the earth all around you. Yes. Because when God created man, he said, you take dominion. Amen. You have dominion over it. Amen. You're the one that's supposed to go in and take care of it. And so if there's anything around you that needs taken care of, you've got the power on the yes. inside of you to do it. You really do. We all do. Yeah. We, we think we don't, and we'll say, well, I can't change him, and I can't change her, and I can't change the job. Yes, you can. Glory. You can start. The, the Bob Jesus said, "The kingdom of heaven it's like a leaven." That's right. All you gotta do is stick a little bit in a lump of bread. That's right. And what happens? You ever, you ever? Uh, I used to make. I haven't made them in a while, but I used to make uh, soft pretzels for my family. They love soft pretzels, and we found a box of it that wasn't so much work. But you still had to add in the yeast and the water and let it rise. And what happens when you have this little pack of yeast compared to everything else you have? But one little pack, you pour it in, you cover it up, you walk away, and if you'll leave it alone, if you won't go back and dig up all the good things that you just did, take the cover off of it 20 times and check on it, if you'll leave it alone and let the yeast do what it's supposed to do, you'll come back and that... That dough will be twice the size it was when you left it behind. Why? Because it works its way through everything and does what it's supposed to do. The kingdom of God is the same way. All you got to do is sow it. It is not your job to bring forth the increase. Paul said, you know, some of us sow and some of us water, but it is the Lord that gives the increase. And if you'll get over into believing that He is love and He'd never fail you, He'd never leave you, He'd never forsake you, you'd believe that He's going to give you that increase. And you wouldn't go and dig up your seed to see if it's working. Hallelujah. If you plant seeds in the ground and you go and dig them up, they'll never spring forth. How do we dig them up? Well, we dig them up through our fear. Sure. We dig it up through our words. Right. We get hands laid on us, and we believe that the Lord healed us. But when something hurts later, we talk about how bad it still hurts. <laughs> and, it, it, and it just, uh, I told you not too long ago, you know, it's just the way it is. Your feet won't quit hurting by you saying how bad your feet hurt. Ne never heard anybody say, my feet got healed when I told everybody how bad it was. It don't work that way. You have to declare.
declare what you want. Yes. You have to speak grace, grace to the yes, mountain. That's, right. that, that's the only word you can speak to it. You can't talk about how big it is. Amen. You can't even get out and, and, you know, we used to do all that dancing around telling it how much it, we hated it. Yep. But all you really have to do is start crying grace, grace. Right. And that'll be enough. And Matt was talking about that those them getting into a portal of heaven the other night. And one of the things that I wrote down here was that, you know, we have total access. Yeah. Right here, right now, right now, all the time, we have total access to heaven. Hallelujah. But there are some keys. Malcolm Rowe used to talk about the keys of the kingdom. And there are some keys to, act, to accessing into heaven. One thing is hearing. And Dad spoke to you last week about Habakkuk. And how he said, I'm going to set a watch on the wall. And the truth is, you got to listen to hear. Yes, you do. Now, see, the Lord speaks all the time. All the time. Always speaking. Always. Always. But you have to make a decision that you're going to listen. You sure yeah. do. And don't tell me that you're just going to hear because you're a Christian. Because it's not true. Mm -hmm. Just even in the natural, sometimes, you know... If somebody keeps talking and they keep talking and they keep talking and they won't hush and you got your mind on other things, right. eventually you start cooning them out. Yeah. And you and you know, they're talking away. It's not that they're not talking. And you can even your physical ears can hear that they're talking. But you have no idea what they said. Right. Didn't make any difference to you. Because, because why? Because you tuned them out. That's right. You have to make a decision that you're going to listen to somebody. Yes, you have to turn your face that way and decide, I'm going to listen to what they're saying. Mm -hmm. You know, we do it with TV. Some people, I'm not this kind of person, really, but some people will not be in a room without a TV playing. Right. Now, they don't have to be watching it. Right. They don't even have to know what's going on with it. But they just want it on. They just like the background noise. And that's all it is, is it's background noise. They can't tell you what's going on in the show. They don't care what's going on in the show. They just need noise in the house because they don't like it to be silent. Right. Well, to some people, they come to church and all of this is a bunch of noise. They come and they come because they know they're supposed to and because right. that's the tradition to come. But they don't hear what happened in that church service. Right. They don't hear the word of the Lord. They don't have a clue. <coughs> they walk right out and go back to their normal life and live their life just like they did the week before, they never change, they never grow. That's true. Even though they go to church every Sunday. That's still true. You can even do it with reading the Word. Yes, you can. I've been guilty of that. You ever read the Word and you got to the end of that chapter and you had no clue what you read? Whether it's that you were sleepy, whether it was that your mind was on something else, whatever the reason, you got up and you got out the Bible because you knew it was right and there's nothing wrong with it. But it had no effect on you because what you read didn't go in. You have to be really tuning in to hear from God. It can't be haphazard. It can't be just, you know, you just show up. Even if you show up, and I, we see people do this all the time. I've seen, and not just today, I mean, back from the time that I was young, and Papa was the minister here. People show up, and as always, we are usually loud and proud and Pentecostal and Holy Ghost. And some people like it, and they get all excited, and they whoop and holler with us, but they have no clue what just happened. Right. <laughs> and they go out, and you don't see them for six months, and you know that if they really got touched by God, right. if they really heard the message, if it had really made an impact on their life, that you'd see them before six months was gone. Yeah. But the truth was, they liked to get in there and holler and scream, but they didn't know what was going on. It was just all noise to them. You have to make a decision to listen to what God has to say. And until you make that decision, you're not going to hear a word. You may hear a lot of lovely words for other people. You may hear a lot of lovely sermons. But to actually hear a word that's going to change your life <coughs> is a whole nother story. Whole nother story. And I thought, about, I thought about Habakkuk and how he set the watch on the wall. And he said, you know, I'm going to stand here until I hear from God. Until I see what I came to see, until the Lord answers me, I'm going to stand here. 
And I also thought about, you know, even in Paul's vision that he had, which was very supernatural, the Lord breaking through when Paul wasn't even looking for him and calling out to him. But the truth was, it was Paul that answered back, Lord, Lord, who art thou, Lord? And if he had, see, that was a choice to choose to listen. Because he still could have stayed there in his stubbornness and chosen not to listen. Pharaoh did it. Sure. Pharaoh saw my acts of God. Yes, he did. But he just became more stubborn and more stubborn and more stubborn. The children of Israel did it. Had their needs met every single day. That's right. Had everything that, you know, <coughs> it mean miraculous things happening. Right. All because of Moses. All because the chosen man of God was standing and interceding in behalf of the people. But when it came time to hear the word of the Lord and go in and take the land, they wouldn't do it. They didn't want to hear that word. And when they got to Mount Sinai and they heard the voice of God, they said, Moses, it's too much for us. You go up and you get the word for us and you bring it back down here to us because this scares us. Why? They were not convinced of the love of God. They were not convinced that if he had chosen them, there was no way he was going to destroy them or do anything that would destroy them. And we got to get convinced of that too. And we got to get just as determined to hear, to set that watch up, yeah. to hear. Because for every situation you go through, I know there are words here in the Bible, and the Lord may give you that word. But there is also specific words for your situation. Yes. See, sometimes we just want to hang on to this, and that's fine, and it's good, and it's our foundation. But what if He has something specific you need to be doing? Yeah. And if you won't listen, if you won't set up that watch to hear from God, where this miracle needs to come from, then it won't happen for you. Right. Another example I thought of with, was Esther's choice when she only took with her what Haggai told her to take. Right. She only did see Haggai represented the Holy Spirit. And she only did what the Holy Spirit told her to do. She, and what did it happen? She became the queen. Yeah. She was able to save her people. But she had, she had a choice to make. Is she going to listen to Haggai? Or is she going to do what she wants to do? Is she going to listen to Haggai? Or is she going to copy all the other girls around her and what they were doing? She had a choice to make, and she made the wise choice. She chose to listen. And he told her exactly what to do, and that, in a moment, like he said, in one night, the king said, that's it. Don't got to look no more. I found her. And it was done in one night. But you have to make that choice that you're going to listen and be like Jesus was. He says, I only do what I see my Father do. Amen. And I only say what I hear my Father say. And that's a choice. And, and, and another thing I want to encourage you, because the Lord's been encouraging me on this, is you have to take up your cross and die. How often? Daily. Why is that an encouragement, you might ask? <laughs> Why is that encouraging? It's encouraging because if you feel like, see, sometimes I, I, I feel like I really need some help on that whole I only say what I hear my father say thing. Right. Yeah. I don't know if you're like me in that area. Yeah. We grew up quick to talk. Yeah. We have a quick answer for everything. Right. Some might say, and now, I'll be honest, among our family, we don't bother each other too much because we're all smart Alex, so we don't take it personal. You know, other people might not could live like we live and speak like we speak to each other. They might take it a little personal. But amongst ourselves, if Matt teases us, we don't take it personal. If we tease Matt, he doesn't take it personal. Nobody gets upset over it all. But you have to be careful, though, when you start talking about things that need to be changed in the Holy Ghost and what you have to say. There comes a place where it's not time to joke about it anymore because it's not a joke anymore. And you need to speak what you want and stop speaking all the things that you don't want. And sometimes I say, you know, Lord, you've got to help me with that to not make my comments and all those things. But it's an encouragement that it's not that there's something wrong with me. It's just that the flesh has to be put under daily. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. So if I see it creeping up, it just means it's time to put it back under. That's right. It just means you say, oops, sorry, God. Right. But you don't just fall apart and say, I'm never going to make it, and it's right. never going to be possible, and 
You know, I'm not like everybody else. You are like everybody else. We all have to die daily. I don't care if you preach to millions or all you do is go and work at your job every day. Everybody has to put the flesh under and die daily. And the more you do it, the more Christ-like you become. So when you see your flesh creep up, don't think that you must, you know, not be saved no more. <laughs> or that you're never going to get it. That's not the truth. The truth is that you just forgot to die for a minute. Forgot it was dead, so you just put it back under, bury it back under, and say, no, nope, that's not me. I'm moving forward. It's no longer I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me, and I'm going forward, and I'm not going to hold any condemnation over it. That's the big thing. I won't hold any condemnation over it either. I'm going to go forward. God doesn't remember it anymore. I'm not going to remember it anymore. Right. If he's removed my sins as far as the east is from the west, then I'm going to have a removing party That's and right. remove them as far as the east is from the west. And I'm not going to sit around. As Tammy said, you need to have a Manasseh. Yeah. Right. What did Joseph say after he had Manasseh? He said, I'm forgetting all the evil that happened to me. Right. I'm forgetting everything bad about my past. And when he did that, the next thing that happened was he had an Ephraim. And he said, now I'm doubly blessed. So if you want to operate in the double, you got to get rid of the past. You can't move forward with double things and then keep your past behind you dragging it along. It don't work that way. you got to put it behind and tell it, no, I don't revel in that anymore. I'm over here on the Ephraim side of life, living in the double, and I'm not going to, to bring up the past. And even when Joseph's brothers, you know, when their dad died, he, they got scared. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because they thought, well, maybe Joseph didn't really forget about the past. Right. Maybe he just did that for Israel's sake, to not upset Daddy while he was still alive. But maybe now that Daddy's gone, he's going to come and give us our just deserve. But Joseph told him, no. Are you kidding me? Look where we are. You might have been it for my evil. But God has turned everything for our good. And because I'm here, I'm second in command. Well, I've been able to save two nations. Talk about a double. He saved Egypt and he saved Canaan. It said that he was able to give them all food. And, I, you know, this, the Lord's turned this into a blessing. Why would I repay you for anything? And assured them that as long as they lived and as long as their children lived, that they would be taken care of. And so, you, you, you know, set up that watch and allow him to put down anything that needs to be put down. Amen. And to raise up all the things that need to be raised up. And then, it finally, it says, faith cometh by hearing. And what? Yeah. Hearing yeah. by the word of God. Yeah. A word for your situation, in your moment, from your God, who is ever present to help yeah. you. Ever present. There's a specific word for everybody's situation. Yes. Something to you. Like I said, I can't tell you what it is. Only the Holy Spirit can. Unless he gives, shows us by the gift of prophecy to tell you specifically what to do, then you're going to have to get it from him. Yes. But he will show you. And he will give it to you. So this is where I wanted to read from 1 Kings 17. It said, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. So what happens? He gets a specific word from the Lord for his situation. He just closed up the heavens, and the Lord tells him where to get to. Right. So well, there will be safety for him, because I guarantee you the king and queen weren't happy about it. Right. And also, well, he will be fed and taken care of. And then what did Elijah, Elijah turn around and do? He went and did according to the word of the Lord. Yeah. He simply got up and did it. <coughs> Sometimes it really is that simple. We make it so hard. We think miracles are so far away. They're not that far away. You just need a word from the Lord and then get up and do it. Yes. Whatever it is. Just to get up and do it. And his was maybe a little bit harder. He had to get up out of his land. 
and get up out of where he was and go somewhere else. But sometimes it's real easy things too. Yeah. So whether you find it easy or hard, and you know, sometimes we're more stubborn. I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm a little more stubborn on the easy things than I am the hard things. Yeah. Why? Well, it's the same thing as I liken it to, you know, if the doctor tells you there's no hope and they absolutely can't do anything and you have no choice but to go by miracle, you suddenly start believing in miracles real strong. But if you just stub your toe and you think that you can, between you and the doctor and the medicine and all these things, you can figure out a way to heal it yourself, a lot of times you don't go around looking for a miracle. You simply take care of it yourself. Yeah. And it's the same way when it comes to those big things. If the Lord, you know, comes and an angel shows up and says, go move to this place. Yeah. We take that as a big sign. And we go and oftentimes we're willing to go do it. But if he comes to us with just a little thing, give an extra five dollars today. Do this little bit. Pray that co-worker that don't like you, pray for him for five minutes every day. Those little things we tend to be more stubborn about because we think, how's that going to help anything? What's that going to do for me? How's five dollars going to come? You know, give five dollars, Lord. I need five thousand. How's five going to help me? You know, and we have that mentality. But the Lord is looking for just one act of obedience, yeah. and He knows exactly what it is mm -hmm. that you need to do. Right. So He goes. It says He went and He did according to the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook Jer Cherith, that is before Jordan. And what happened? Exactly what God said would happen. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook, and it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up, because there had been no rain in the land. And that's where a lot of people would have said, well, I must have missed God. Because we think sometimes, you know, if the brook dries up, Maybe God was never in it to begin with. No, he just has, it's just time to move on to another plan and another way. And the truth is, a lot of times we won't move if the brook don't dry up. If we get comfortable and we get, you know, to doing our own thing in our own way and we're real comfortable in a situation, a lot of times we won't get up and move along unless the brook just dries up and forces us. Because I'm sure that, you know, it was nice to have birds just bring you your food every single day. Didn't even have to go out and look for it. But once the brook dried up, he needed another miracle. And he's ready to listen again. And it says, And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Sarah path, which belongeth to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Sarah path. And when he came to the gate of the city, Behold, the widow woman was there gathering her sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. Now this is one of those little things. He's only asking for a little bit. But sometimes those little things seem so hard to us, especially if we don't have a whole lot to begin with. It seems hard. And she said, And as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, What was the first thing? Fear not. Don't be afraid to go do what God told you to do. Don't be afraid of it. Because he has a plan and he's going to sustain you. He's just looking for you to have what? The willing and obedient eat the good of the land. Yeah. Not just the obedient, because some people do what they're told to do, but they're not willing. I won't say which child, because they wouldn't like me saying it. One of my children recently went and did something I asked them to do with a whole lot of complaining. The whole way. The whole time they did it. And then asked me when they were all done, okay, are you happy? And I said, no. <laughs> Why am I not happy? Because just because you did it, you did it with the wrong attitude. And I'll be the first to admit, I've given when I didn't really want to give. Instead of being a cheerful giver, I was a fearful giver. Or at least a little bit of a reluctant giver. And 
you know, and I've, I've gotten up and come to church when I really didn't want to get up and come to church. And I didn't do it as a sacrifice unto the Lord. I just did it because that was the thing you were supposed to do. And you know how much I got out of the service? About nothing. All right. Because I wasn't willing and obedient. See, you can get willing and obey on some things that you don't really want to do. But because your heart says, God, I'm going to do it as an act of obedience yeah, to right. you. Because your heart says, even though I don't understand what's going on right now, because you said it and because I love you, I'm going to do it. Right. That makes all the difference in the world. And then you can do that which even terrifies you in the natural because in your spirit, your spirit has bowed down and said, Lord, I'm surrendering this to you. Yeah. This is an act that I'm doing before you. This is my sacrifice before you today, my offering unto you today. And I believe that anything that I give to you, I receive back, pressed down, shaken together, overflowing. And I know you're going to take care of everything. My heart is willing before you. And it says that, he told her, Fear not, and go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, right. and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and thy son. For thus saith the Lord of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, Amen. neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. Right. And she went, and what did she do? She did. She went and did according to the saying of Elijah. Amen. And she and he and her house did eat many, yeah, days. many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, oh. neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, yes. which he spake by Elijah. Oh. You are one action of obedience away from your miracle. Amen. At any given moment, you are just one step away from getting everything that you believe in God for. Any moment. All you have to do is open up your heart and say, Lord, show me what to do. That's it. And he'll show you. And all you got to do then is just do it. Do according to the word of the Lord. Be it great or be it small. He's not going to ask anything of you that you cannot do. It may require you to swallow your fears, swallow your pride, swallow a lot of self, but you will be able to do it. His grace will grace you to do it. And we immediately, see, that's what I want to get through your, through to you today. It's just like Matt was talking about immediate things. Immediately, immediately, the flower began to reproduce. Immediately, the oil began to reproduce. They didn't have to sit around and starve for a year, waiting for that to come in, barely making it. But immediately, as soon as she obeyed, there it was. Because that's how a miracle is. It's immediate. Um, one last one that I didn't get to read, but that Matt talked about the other night. When, G when the ten lepers cried out to Jesus to be healed. Yeah. What did he say to them? This is a, you know, that, those are Old Testament examples, but Jesus has many New Testament examples of this in his ministry. And what did he say to, him, to them? He said, go and show thyself unto right. the priests. Because in their day, if you were a leper, I don't care how healed you were. If the priest didn't say you were healed, you still couldn't go back into That's society. Right. He told them, he didn't lay hands on them first. He didn't declare them healed first. He said, no, go and show yourself to the priests. Yeah. And they obeyed without anything showing that they were any better. They turned around and obeyed. Yeah. And as they went, the Bible says, right. they were healed. As they went and obeyed the word of the yeah. Lord, they yeah. immediately began to be healed. Yeah. And one of them got such a revelation of it that he came running back yeah, to right. fall down and praise the Lord. And he not only got healed, but he got made totally whole from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Everything restored. How fast? In a moment. And in one moment, everything you need yes. this morning can be yeah. yours. In one moment, you can go home and it's all different. Or you can be yes. standing right here if it's in your body and it's all different in a moment. But when you hear that word, the first thing you got to do this morning is stand and take the watch. Get ready to hear a word. Turn your face to the Lord to hear a word. And when you hear it, don't wait to act on it. Act on it. As soon as you hear what to do, it said run with the word. Make sure your feet get to run and to do whatever it is that God told you to do. And when you do it, don't worry because the miracle is going to happen. Just like that. God bless you this morning.